You know we love horror games here, so today we're getting specific and talking about 10 games you should never play alone. We wanted to talk about fun games with outright big jump scares, chases, or long lasting moments of scariness that leave you open to those big out loud screams. This might not be like the Citizen Kane of video games, but they're definitely good to scare the faint of heart. Let's get going and get started off with number 10, which is PT. Let's just get it out of the way. It's not a game, technically, I, I guess. It's a playable teaser, hence it being called PT. Whatever the hell it's classified as, this is one that you might want to avoid playing alone because it's pretty spooky, especially if you're like me and you low-key believe in ghosts, and by low-key I mean high-key. You're wandering around a dark house while a ghost is popping up from all sides trying to creep you out, and she is super creepy looking too. Lisa, like, straight up still gives me shivers. There's a really good jump scare where you peek into a cracked open door, and as you're peeking through, Lisa's creepy face pops up and scares you and then slams it shut. This list is focused on big scares, but even the subtle dread here scores more points than almost any other horror game. It's a shame this whole project got canceled. Yeah, man, this, this one is a bummer. If PT was this creepy, something so short, imagine how awesome Hideo Kojima's Silent Hills would have have been. Thanks a lot, Konami. Living in Bummer City. Population, me. At number 9, now Slender the Arrival isn't a very good video game, but that Slenderman gameplay though, that's fun. Remember what started as a simple 3D game you could play in your browser? You looked for the items to escape this labyrinth all the while Slenderman was chasing you and popping in at random places and you couldn't look at him or the screen would get all staticky and scary? Well, they made a whole game on that and expanded it in some places. But the levels you're simply avoiding Slenderman are still so terrifying and as yell out loud as the original game that helped start the Slenderman fascination. The graphics are actually pretty decent and really help with the mood and the atmosphere. Feeling like he's always around is even better when he looks really convincing graphically. The way he appears, the musical cues, the sound effects, if you are playing with someone watching, they're probably gonna be laughing at you. Next up at number 8, we have Resident Evil 7, a personal favorite of mine. I'm a big Resident Evil fan, specifically all of the pre-Resident Evil 4 games, and I'm not throwing shade at Resident Evil 4. I love Resident Evil 4, I just prefer my Resident Evil games more on the scary side, and Resident Evil 7 brought the series back to that. This was way more straight-up survival horror than the last few entries in the series. For one, you weren't a crazy soldier man who punches boulders, but instead a normal, everyday dude who could barely shoot a gun, which helped to make you feel a bit more helpless than you usually would feel in these games. I mean, the game opens up with uneasiness. As soon as you get into the house, there's some heavy Evil Dead vibes. Then you find Mia, and, well, I won't spoil it, but the people that have played it know what I'm getting at. Then you have Jack Baker, who crashes through walls at the Kool-Aid Man, which always made me jump a bit. Then there's the whole Marguerite boss fight, where she's bug-like, and she's just crashing through windows, scaring the shit out of you in the process. I'm super happy the series is back to doing stuff like this, and if you've seen those Resident Evil 8 rumors, it seems like the series might continue down this spooky path. At number 7, we have Outlast. Yeah, they're both scary, but we're specifically talking about the first one here. There's just something about wandering around a dark, scary hospital. It's always creepy. Especially when you're playing as someone without weapons, whose only means of self-defense is running and hiding. Oh, and of course, you're being hunted by spooky hospital patients. Outlast is pretty much playing a horror movie. There are some classic jump scares that you see coming and they still get you anyway. Whether it's a body swinging from a ceiling, a dude slumped over in a wheelchair, shooting up and coming to life, or having that big dude turn a corner and then relentlessly starting to chase you down. Outlast also kills it with the jump scare music, making those scares even more jumpy. Then you have the whole camcorder thing with batteries that die and need to be replaced. Very much Wreck inspired, very, very cool for the time. That whole camera thing alone stresses me out. Yeah, I can't talk about Atlast anymore. Uh, moving on. At number six, Hello Neighbor is a weird one. It's pretty bright and colorful at times, and kind of goofy looking, and sometimes controls really weird. So you wouldn't expect it to be, you know, like, scary. It can really freak you out at times, though. And Hello Neighbor, you're trying to make it into the basement of your neighbor's house all while he's hunting you down and trying to capture you. He has really good AI too and will hear a window break and will also notice how you're breaking into the house and will start to throw down traps or block those entrances so you can't do it again. Your heart starts to pump a bit when he's on you too and then when he finally 
does get you, he's right there, like in your face, and it seems like he appears out of thin air at times. It's way more of a puzzle game than a horror game, I say, but big kudos to the devs for making it pretty intense at times, but not losing the overall vision of the game, and also not making it like super scary and dark. Next up at number 5, we have Alien Isolation. An actual good Alien game and a long line of not so good Alien and Predator games. This is the game you should be looking at when you talk about movie tie-in games because it does it right, expanding the movie lore and world a bit instead of trying to shoehorn something into it and making it messy. Here you play as Ellen Ripley's daughter, Amanda Ripley, who finds herself in a similar situation as her mother, you know, relentlessly being hunted down by a xenomorph. The name of the game here is Run and Hide. You really can't fight this thing. You spend most of the game using your tracker to keep tabs on where it is and as it gets closer and closer the tracker goes faster and faster as well as your heart rate and i mean your real life heart rate you have to be careful of where you hide here because you can kind of screw yourself over the vents for example they're a great place to hide but you can't hide for too long and you don't want to make your presence known because that xenomorph will jump right up there with you. The most terrifying thing in this game is hearing thumping in the dark vents with you, then turning on your flashlight only to find a big xenomorph a few inches in front of your face. Not a pleasant sight to see right before you die. This is a scary one for sure. At number four, we have Five Nights at Freddy's. Yep. We're talking about it, because before it blew up as this massive thing, if you just experienced that first game in a vacuum, it was actually pretty spooky, yeah. Of course, it did end up becoming way more than a game. Well, well, no, it is a game, but it blew the hell up. I mean, I get it. I think the idea behind the game is genius. A spooky ripoff of Chuck E. Cheese, where the animatronics come to life at night and uh, turn homicidal, I guess. Yeah, I think it's an awesome idea because I think we've all been terrified by Charles Entertainment Cheese at some point in our life, right? So yeah, this definitely works and all the characters are overly creepy even before they like become bad and actually creepy. This was a huge Let's Play game too, specifically because of how it plays, I think. There are a lot of jump scares in it and jump scares usually make for some really good reactions and content and whatnot. So there really was more than just a game here really, but really like it had a bit of a cultural impact as well. It's weird that this is the game that did that. Is this a game for me? No, definitely not. I couldn't care, but I respect the spooky. At number three, do y'all remember Condemned Criminal Origins? This was an Xbox 360 launch game, and at the time, it was a pretty unsettling game. You play as Ethan Thomas, a crime scene investigation agent that works for the FBI. You're investigating a bunch of murders and are trying to hunt down Serial Killer X. Your investigation will take you into a bunch of condemned and derelict buildings, looking for clues, and these buildings are filled with people that have just straight up lost it. And they'll pop out of corners and get the jump on you and start swinging at you with whoever they can find, wrenches, lead pipes, etc. The combat here is pretty intense too. First you're wandering around in the dark, then you get scared by some crazy looking dude swinging a pipe at you. Then you, acting on that adrenaline rush, just have to uh, wail him to death before he does it to you. It's pretty intense, honestly. There are also crazy crime scenes where you walk around looking for clues and they're always like the creepiest, dingiest setting. Some of them look right out of Saw. The game totally succeeds with some genuinely terrifying environmental sequences and an overall unsettling feeling of being unwelcome wherever you are. Almost every environment is like, you know, there are people somewhere in here and they're watching you and they want you out. Dude, it's amazing. If this is a game you miss, I definitely recommend jumping in and checking it out. Next up at number two, we have Fear. This is one I don't like talking about or looking at, honestly, because I really can't handle creepy black-haired little girls. It reminds me too much of The Ring, and I'm still not over that movie. And of course, that's the main antagonist in the series. You play as a member of the Fear Team, which stands for First Encounter Assault Recon, and you're trying to take down Alma Wade, a creepy, psychic girl who has become way too powerful. Fear does a good job of being scary and utilizes the usual but very effective tricks. Flickering lights, scary sounds, catching a glimpse of something creepy real quick, turning the corner and having a creepy little girl right there in front of you. You know, things that movies have been doing for years. Tried and true. And Fear does a great job at implementing all of that here. Thankfully, you do play as a soldier man, so you're pretty well armed, which does make you feel a little less hopeless than the dude in Outlast or, you know, any other game like that. So thankfully, there is that. But you're a tactical badass and it's still scary good job 
Finally, at number one, the now classic Japanese horror franchise is often ruled as much scarier than other games in its similar market. If you think ghosts are scary, well, has Fatal Frame got some nasty scary ghosts for you? From the story being genuinely unsettling to the actually pretty sickening things you have to encounter and engage in the gameplay, all you really have is your camera and you have to look through it to see the ghosts and they get right up in your grill like a good old fashioned haunted house. There's some good old fashioned jump scares in here along with all of that dread. It's best played at night with the lights off for sure. We're putting it at number one because some people claim they can't finish it and some consider it one of the best horror games ever so much respect for that. Before we go, we do have some bonuses for you. First up, we have Amnesia. Of course, we have to mention the game that really started the next generation of horror games and big, massive Let's Plays on YouTube. Incredibly scary at the time, but talked to to death at this point. Still, when it was still new, the fear of the unknown in the game was incredibly powerful. Then we have Siren, another scary girl Japanese horror game that had some pretty good terrifying moments that many people may have nostalgic feelings for. And those are 10 horror games you should never play alone, but we want to hear from you. So meet us down in the comments and let us know what you think. I'm sure there are some that we missed. As I'm sure you already know, hitting that like button really helps us out. And if you're new, subscribing is a good idea because we put out videos like this every single day. As always, thank you for stopping by and hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.